All right, so let's get started with part two. Okay, so um, this is a collection by William Shakespeare. I think it includes all of his works. Um, this is um, in a uh, collection uh, that a book club from a book club that my father was in years ago uh, called Blacks Readers Service. Uh, and um, it specialized in classics. And so you would have um, different works by different authors. Some of the works were abridged. Uh, there were essays. Um, I have a collection of uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and, um, and Henry David Thoreau. So, yeah, but this is Shakespeare. And uh, I think this might be all of his works. Um, I had to read Shakespeare in high school. Um, uh, I read jo Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth, and I absolutely hated uh, Romeo and Juliet because uh, we read it in the ninth grade, and it was incredibly hard. Uh, by the time I got in university, however, and took it as an undergraduate, I took uh, the tragedies of Shakespeare, um, I and I enjoyed it much more. So I do like, I'm a fan of Shakespeare. Um, it, it, of course, he's still tedious to read, but I can understand it. Uh, he's a slow read, uh, but yeah, I'm thinking that this year I will probably read a comedy. Uh, I had um, took it on myself to uh, in the last few years to try to read a Shakespeare play a year. I've read most of his tragedies and so I'm thinking that this year I might read a comedy. So yeah, this is how the book is set up. It's sort of the pages are divided right here like this. So they have it like uh, in the middle and it's divided up. The print's kind of small so yeah, but yeah, that's how it is. So um, the last uh, sh uh, Shakespearean play I read was actually, uh, I think it was uh, um, Antony and Cleopatra about three years ago. So uh, I want to get back on schedule again doing Shakespeare. Um, this is another from the same book club. These, this is the works of Oscar Wilde. And um, what I'd like to read is in here, um, his uh, story, The Picture of Dorian Gray. Um, see, they all have nice little red ribbons. And um, I've only read one work of uh, Oscar Wilde's. Uh, I think it was either The Selfish Giant or The Happy Prince. But I really look forward to reading his um, novel, The Picture of Dorian Gray. I, I think it's more like it's kind of like a psychological novel fantasy. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Another from the same collection is um, the works of Henrik Ibsen. Okay, if I can get around. Sorry that my tripod is so small. I'm going to eventually invest in a taller one. Um, I've read one of Ibsen's plays, uh, An Enemy of the People, a few years ago. So um, this year I plan to read A Doll's House and maybe uh, Hedda Gabler. Now, um, Ibsen was a Norwegian playwright, and uh, I forgot to mention that Wilde was a British author. Okay, um, the Ibsen was more in the... Um, he was, I think, a little bit later than Wilde. Um, I didn't do, I didn't look him up exactly before, but, um, I think he was, uh, maybe mid to late 19th century, early 20th. So something like that. But I, I you can check, okay? <laughs> and stuff. I didn't think to do my research on that before. Uh, cause I'm sort of doing this on a tangent and I'm trying to get this done. All right. Another book is, um, this is by an African writer, Bessie Head, A Question of Power. Now, um, Bessie Head is, um, sort of almost like the national writer of Botswana. Botswana is a, a country, um, in, um, in, uh, Southern Africa. It borders, um, South Africa and it, um, uh, most of the country is desert or semi-desert. The Kalahari Desert is in most of the country. Uh, and uh, Bessie Head uh, was born in South Africa, but she moved to Botswana after her marriage fell apart. She moved there with her son and um, she had a very difficult life. Um, I really like her writings, but I think this one is different from her other novels that I've read. Her novels are usually, you know, even the, the even though the characters might be feeling facing a lot of difficulties, they're basically pretty optimistic. Her writing has a quiet elegance to it, but I heard that A Question of Power is more, much more disturbing, uh, much more raw type book uh, because she 
wrote this book at the time when she was going through a mental breakdown. Uh, she actually died at a young age in Botswana. Uh, she became an alcoholic, had a lot of emotional problems. Uh, you know, she was, um, a, you know, very good writer. Uh, but she, um, and she had actually been a school teacher, but she was mixed race and she basically, you know, had lived, uh, through the trauma of growing up in South Africa, being abandoned, uh, because her mother was a white South African and her father, uh, was African. Uh, 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 and, um, uh, her mother was from an upper class family and her father was the hired help. And so, uh, so yeah, she, um, but she is a very good writer. Uh, I really love her works. So I look forward to reading this one, which I, uh, want to see how different it is from the other books that I've read of hers, like, uh, her nonfiction book about Sorori, uh, Village of the Rain Wind and other books like, uh, when rain clouds gather, uh, et cetera. Okay, I'm going to continue with another book. Um, for the last three or four years, I've been reading from the Oku series. Uh, Oku, um, let me get it back here. Oku um, is a manga. Um, it's more for, uh, I would say it's more for adults than it is for for children, for maybe older teenagers, okay? Uh, they've got explicit content on it. Now, the earlier books did have some situations in it, um, uh, but uh, the later books, I've not, it, it hasn't been this way. So, but um, it might be in this one. But um, but Oku is set in Edu, Japan. It is a uh, alternative history. Uh, of Edu Japan. Um, it's set during a time of crisis in Japan. Uh, there, uh, uh, there's an epi uh, epidemic that breaks out among the, uh, the male population that kills one a uh, third of the male population, the, uh, the young boys and young men. And so, um, to try to survive this catastrophe, uh, the country becomes a matri matriarchy. So all the women hold all the powerful positions in the country. Uh, and basically these books cover like the power politics, uh, the, uh, the love stories, uh, it, within the, uh, palace of the shogun. The woman, uh, the, uh, the shogun is actually in the book, um, uh, a female. Uh, the Shogun was the chief military leader of Japan, um, but um, in this case, because of the crisis, because of the epidemic that wiped out their uh, a good bit of their male population, um, the Shogun is a woman and uh, it deals with power politics and the uh, harem. The harem is made up of men. So I'm hoping that this year I can go ahead and finish up this series. Uh, there are 17 books in it. Um, the series was written by Fumi uh, Yoshinaga. Uh, it was also made into a mini series in uh, Japan. So yeah, so I look forward to finishing working, reading this one. Um, I'll flip through. You can see a little bit of some of the artwork. The artwork, some of it is absolutely stunning. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Um, this is a history written by Michael Facellus who was a uh, Greek Byzantine monk. He was a savant, means he was a very learned individual. He was not only, a, he was a monk, uh, an author, a theologian, etc. And this is a history about the 14 Byzantine rulers, or the Byzantine Empire was actually, the real name was the Eastern Roman Empire. And it was situated in what is now Turkey. Uh, Micah Phacelus uh, lived from 1018 uh, until 1096. And so, um, this book uh, gets into the politics uh, and the psychology of the era in which these emperors lived. So I very much look forward to reading this because I'm a huge fan of uh, Byzantine or Eastern Roman uh, Empire history. Next is by Virginia Woolf, uh, the uh, the modern uh, uh, British uh, 20th, uh, 20th century uh, writer. Uh, this is a novel of hers called Orlando. Um, this is the, this will be the first time I've read one of her books. Uh, I had thought about reading Mrs. Dalloway, but uh, since I already had this one in my library, I decided to, I'm, I'm going to read Orlando. It's a fantasy, actually. So, um, um, uh, Virginia, uh, Virginia Woolf's writings are kind of popular with some of the people who are on my uh, Goodreads friends list. So, I'm very curious about what this is about and I look forward to reading it. Next 
is a book called Migrations of the Heart, and it's by Marita Golden. She is an African-American writer, not very well known, like, uh, say, somebody like uh, Alice Walker or Zora Neale Hurston or James Baldwin. But um, this is her autobiography. I read uh, an excerpt from uh, one of her novels when I was reading the anthology Daughters of Africa last year. Uh, I was really impressed and liked the story. So since I had this one on my shelf, uh, I thought, okay, I'll read this first and maybe read the novel that I uh, read the excerpt from uh, last year. So um, this is about um, her life uh, and particularly her marriage to a Nigerian man and moving to uh, Nigeria and trying to adapt to the culture there. Uh, you probably see the little football shaped things there. Uh, those are pecans. Okay, unshelled pecans. Those were uh, come from my. Those are my mom's. Or if I want them to, um, I can have them. But um, these came. My aunt sent those to my mom. So that's what that is. If you're wondering, what's those weird looking little football things in there? <laughs> okay. Um, another book is Nagib Mahfouz. Uh, another book I want to read is uh, a book of three novels by Nagib Mahfouz, who was. Um, uh, he won the Nobel Prize uh, back maybe 30 years ago. Uh, he was an Egyptian writer. Uh, I've read already about four of his books, his uh, his ancient Egyptian trilogy. I started reading the Cairo trilogy back, I don't know, probably over 20 years ago. Uh, and I didn't finish the, the series, so I'm going to go back and read the first book in the trilogy. Uh, and that was actually, the Cairo series was actually the one, uh, the, the uh, collection that, uh, propelled him to uh, getting the Nobel Prize in Literature. Now, in this collection, I've already read The Thief and the Dogs, so I want to read Manak Ali and Miramar. I really love his writing. Uh, his writing, the uh, ancient Egyptian trilogy, was, I mean, it was just uh, epic. I mean, it was on this, the battle scenes just remind me a lot of uh, the battle scenes in War and Peace in uh, uh, Leo Tolstoy's uh, masterpiece. And then finally, okay, is um, a book by uh, George Sand. Uh, George Sand, um, uh, pen name George Sand. Her real name was Amantine um, Dupin. Probably not saying it right. She was a 19th century French writer, very prolific. Um, she was uh, very known for being very, lived a very unconventional lifestyle. Um, this book, Consuelo, um, uh, a romance of Venice. Um, uh, George Sand is, um, uh, she wrote a lot of novels. Her books, her novels tend to be, uh, on the, on the sort of melodramatic. She might add in a little politics of the time and also, uh, psychological. So, uh, I've read uh, several of her books. I've been trying to read as many of her books as I can over the last few years. She even wrote a fantasy science fiction novel called, excuse me, Laura. And uh, she lived a very non-conventional life. She married uh, at a young age, a much older man. Uh, the marriage didn't work out, so they separated. And she uh, went off to Paris where she hobnobbed with like the creme de la creme of the uh, intellectual uh, elite of her time. She was the, uh, uh, one of her lovers was Frederick Chopin, uh, the Polish uh, composer. And pianist, uh, one of my favorite composers. Uh, she was good friends with Franz Litz, uh, Alexandre Dumas, who wrote The Three Musketeers and, uh, The, uh, uh The, uh, Man in the Iron Mask and Count of Monte Cristo. Um, she also would go around dressed sometimes as a man as well. Uh, so she lived a very non-conventional lifestyle and quite an interesting person. I like her, her novels. Sometimes they can be a bit overly emotional and fainting and everything. But to me, she's a very good, she's quite a good writer. So yeah. Um, all right. So that's the end uh, of what I plan to be reading. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, I do want to put in um, that uh, reading is an excellent way to really exercise your brain. Um, in the case of books, there are endless choices. The choices are endless. Um, people often are, are attached to the television, but actually they are missing out and they're cheating themselves because in television you tend to get just repetition, the same old thing, remake, same stories over and over. So uh, I really do encourage uh, uh, people to read. Uh, I used to be in literacy. So it's very important. Used to be in, I used to be a literacy uh, instructor as well, besides teaching English. So it's very, very important 
important that uh, that you and it's a good idea to start to pick up a book. Start off light, read light reads, and then if you want to eventually graduate on to more literary stuff, that's great. So I'm going to end here. So thanks again for watching my video, and this is this is Sincere. Ray. Until next time.